This is Alan Lazard, a.k.a. The Lazard King, wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers, and you're listening to Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Episode 997. Oh, oh, brother. It's the final countdown. <laughs> Friday, December 4th. Mike Wright. Hey. Jason Moore. Howdy. Andy Holloway here. Back with you. Nine more matchups to get into for week 13. Your fantasy playoffs inching closer. And uh, it, it's exciting. It's fun. I This whole year I've tried to tell myself and others to roll with the punches, right? It's 2020, and I'm here to tell you it's impossible. If you really <laughs> care about fantasy football, if you really care about your team, you're going to be invested, and it's going to be a gut punch if you lose a player to the COVID IR. And I was talking to Mike yesterday, our league mm-hmm. of record. Um, we think it's set up to where essentially this is the final week of the regular season, and I'm either playing Jason in the first round of the playoffs or I'm playing Mike in the first round of the playoffs. And the odds aren't zero that uh, something like this past week happens where Lamar sure. Jackson or J.K. Dobbins or James Conner or somebody misses a game because they go on the COVID IR, and that will just be mm-hmm. bad luck. Yep, it I, will. One of the things I've I've learned over the last several years is that, you know, when I watch other other uh, league mates have a bad beat or lose a player, you know, they, they scored the second most in the league and they lost. <laughs> they, they do things with well, much more dignity than you? Well, no, what I'm saying is I watch that and I go, I go, you know, they – they, I watch them tilt, mm-hmm. and I think they should be able to handle that better. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then when it happens to me, yeah. I can't handle it at all. You tilt before anything has happened. Oh, man. you pre-tilt. Yeah, like you hashtag pre-tilt. <laughs> three weeks, three weeks ago in our league of record, it was very clear. Yes, to everyone but you that you were going to be in the playoffs. Like, you could have locked it in. I would have bet the house that you were, your team would make the playoffs. <laughs> you had such a huge lead in wins. Your points were fine. And you're over here crying wolf oh, yeah. that you're not going to make it to the playoffs. Meanwhile, Andy and I are getting actual bad beats, losing by fractions of a point, having to slip in the back door of the playoffs. Yeah, you guys should have handled that better. On, <laughs> in your tower... Like, I'm, oh, I'm not going to make the playoffs. I will say this. Uh, yeah, go ahead. All three of us are in the playoffs. Yeah. So that's 50% of the playoffs are ballers. Yeah. Let's, let's bring home the championship in um, our league of well, rights. I promise I will try. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that, like, last week for about a 10-minute span, you tried to be dignified. I saw it. I saw it happen <laughs> on Slack. I saw what you're talking about happen where you're like, I didn't like how Andy acted when he tweet when he <laughs> tilted in the studio two weeks ago. I'm going to be dignified. Whatever happens, happens. And it lasted 10 to I 11 mean, minutes. Look, I'm working on it, okay? Yeah. We're all about <laughs> self-improvement. I've got to work on that. I admit that the first step in my recovery process here is admitting I have a problem, <laughs> and I have a problem with pre-tilt, mid-tilt, post-tilt. And, post tilt. <laughs> and I'm going to work on I'm going to work on the pre and the mid tilt. Post tilt's fine. If, post tilt yes, po- yes. po- uh, is fine for everybody. If you lose, you get the bad beat, you can tilt. That's but part the, of fantasy. But the pre and the mid, <laughs> I'm going to work on myself, okay? That's my it's, that's my promise to you. All right, too. I will too. And it takes more than a thousand shows. That's what we're telling <laughs> you. All right, it's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Look, I, I appreciate our Alan Lazard show intro, but I really screwed it up because I was real close to hitting Alan Robinson's show intro mm. today. And I just watched Alan Robinson with our friend of the show, Adam Lefko, on the underrated show he does. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, he was trying to get his Madden rating up, right? So I watched yeah, Alan right. Robinson on right. underrated. 
And here, here we have this week's giveaway for our f- supporters at jointhefoot.com. Did Allen Robinson try and get his quarterback ratings up? Uh, impossible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are stuck. That's called a trade. <laughs> uh, Allen Robinson signed jersey. Congratulations. This comes from pristineauction.com, our Foot Clan Friday giveaway. And it goes to uh, Kawan uh, Bigelow. Mm. Uh, not, not Deuce. No. Kawan. What? Thank you. Thank yeah. you. That was a deuce. Yes, that was a Deuce Bigelow <laughs> reference. Well, you had to make that. We all thought it. I mean, <laughs> as long as you. I mean, how often do you hear Bigelow? <laughs> yeah. And and the nice thing is, is on on jointhefoot dot com. We don't know if it's your real name or if it's a you know. Right. A lot of people have. They're trying to get that listener of the week with their with their name. But you can. Uh, well, congratulations, Allen Robinson signed jersey. Very impressive. Do you think he's back in in Chicago next year? Mm. What do you think he wants to happen? Uh, he wants to play with a good quarterback is uh, what he wants. I'll tell you what I want to happen. I just decided. Okay. I, there was a report, Houston Chronicle speculation this morning. I said it on the show a week ago that I thought Will Fuller would go back to Houston. But what if oh, he don't? Man, what if it's so Allen good. Robinson in free agency to Houston? That would be fantastic. I think the world wants to see Allen Robinson with a good quarterback. Because with the bad quarterback, he's pretty great. So, yeah. congratulations, and you can check out Pristine Auction yourself if you want to check out uh, hundreds of daily auctions. Use the code Ballers for a ten dollars credit. Follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, YouTube.com slash the Fantasy Footballers. I did I did some math this morning, uh, and by I did some math as I I read I read a chart, and it said that thirty two percent of the people that watch on YouTube aren't subscribed to the channel. What? So I'm here to say don't be part of the 32%. Well, they might be new, and so welcome. Now click that bell. Yeah. Subscribe. Subscribe. Well, click subscribe first, then the bell. Sure. Either way. I don't know if you can click the bell without it. So then by me telling them to click the bell, I I killed two birds with one stone. Thank you, Jason. (laughs) Thank you very much. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. I can't imagine Jason killing one bird with one stone. <laughs> Above him. I'm not saying I, I can do know, it either. I don't know what kind of insult that is. No, that, but... no, that's that's not an insult. That's a that's a uh, uh, Jason loves animals situation of, oh. him, of him being like, I can't do it. Be free, you bird. Couldn't, you couldn't take a like a stinky pooping pigeon out if it's it's in the eaves of your house and it's I have, pooping on your kids. And I have a sweet spot in my heart for pigeons. Really? Yeah. You're the only one. I am. My mother stole one Flying from the rats. zoo uh, when I was young. Wait, and how what? Did, stole? Well, hold on, hold on. How do you steal a pigeon from the zoo? I think that's just like capturing a pigeon. Are you okay, sure it was a zoo, zoo pigeon? It wasn't just a pigeon. <laughs> did she in? go into an exhibit and take the pigeon? <laughs> I, and this so zoo I, sucks. I promise we will get to fantasy football here. <laughs> But I stole some crickets from the zoo. When you walk into the Phoenix Zoo, there's this big bridge you go over, and there's a bunch of pigeons there. Uh There was one with an injured foot, and my mom, she grabbed it, put her in her purse. We were driving out, and yes, and we're we're driving out, and we got stopped by someone. Uh, from the Who Phoenix Zoo. It? No, but oh. we were afraid they did. She's like, oh, no, what have I done? <laughs> but we took we took that pigeon home. We had this aviary, and we ra- we we nursed it back to life. Yes. And then See? Callie. Wa- That's great. You wa- named the pigeon? Yes. I'm Cal- willing to throw away multiple matchups on today's show to continue this story. <laughs> and then we, we set it free, and Callie came back every day. Uh, well, they, that's they, a great that's story. That's the problem with pigeons. They're homing birds. So if you get them off of your roof, they're going to come back for, for life. I like that story, Jason. Thanks, Mike. In the purse, too, huh? Yeah. Just keep that purse. Uh, I I assume not. Yeah, you know, I know that you grew up and your mom had a soft spot for all animals. Yes, and you had a true. lot of animals. So that's pretty cool. I couldn't. I could, so you wouldn't kill them with uh, one stone, two stone, three I, birds? No. 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 Nope. Josh Jacobs. Let's let's turn to fantasy here. Uh, Josh Jacobs and Nelson Aguilar did not practice on Wednesday or Thursday. This casts a lot of doubt on the Josh Jacobs side of things. In fact, if you were, even if he was active and you had Devontae Booker, are you starting to get to that point where you're not sure which guy is the better one to play? No, I think if Josh Jacobs is active, you have to play him. I mean, it, not saying it's impossible for it to turn out the other way where uh, Booker has the better game, but Josh Jacobs would 
would presumably run ahead, and he's much more talented. But this, what what you're saying makes sense. He had an ankle injury, left the game, didn't come back, and now hasn't practiced. <laughs> like, all signs point to him not playing to me. Okay. And Jacobs has had a pretty good fantasy year, like, in terms of their, his final total. I think he was RB5 before this past week. I will say this, because, I, it, you know, we have opinions about players, and, and Josh Jacobs was a my guy. I am actually not that impressed with Josh Jacobs this year. I don't think, you know, we watch a lot of film. Players stand out. Dalvin Cook stands out. Difference-making running back. Jacobs has looked above average, but not on that level to me. So, he's, I mean, he's been great for fantasy. I know. I know. He has. And wow. I'm, I'm happy about that because he's my guy. So, That's, I want him to perform for people. But I, I, I don't have Josh Jacobs drafted anywhere. I think not that I was avoiding him. I would have loved him on my team, but... I did not realize he's the running back six right now. Yeah, and that is with an injury plagued uh, week twelve where he finished at fifty because he he wasn't on the field. Wow! So he's he's been great, but I I don't think it's been a, a something where like he's a good grinder, but he's not a you know he hasn't made a huge difference in the passing game, especially the the last few weeks compared to the beginning. Yeah, they need to unleash him. Yeah, that I mean that would help. <laughs> Nelson Aguilar though, if he's off the field, if you are. Moving forward with Derek Carr for some reason. Can you do Hot that? Hotwire. Hotwire the car. A little jump start. Yeah, one final ride. I mean. <laughs> you can't do that without N Nelson Aguilar. He's, he's been the red zone machine this season. So I think if Aguilar is out, then even if you want to double down on Carr, you shouldn't. If Nelson Aguilar is out, I like Hunter Renfro more than Kiki QT this week. Let me put that out there. If you were thinking about playing QT, I like Renfro more. Double digits last week would be targeted a lot. All right, DeAndre Swift. Let's talk about DeAndre Swift. He is out of the league's concussion protocol now, missed practice on Thursday. Then there was this, like, kind of, you know, Adrian Peterson said he doesn't Ominous. seem like himself since the brain injury. Says it's been hard to watch. I don't know yeah. if he's out there this week, and it just kind of casts some... Sad clouds yeah, over the whole situation. I mean, it just highlights again the concussions of of how like I mean these are a, it's a mysterious injury where some some human beings can get a concussion and they're perfectly fine in three days, and and some people can get a concussion and they're out months weeks yeah weeks to a month and it's so it's you you got to monitor the situation. We hope that that DeAndre is. Okay. Now he did miss practice due to an illness. Uh, now that he's out of the concussion protocol, I I, I think the hope here is that that's what the that's energy? what yeah. yeah. The, the, if if I'm real sick, my energy level is yeah. not the same as when I'm not sick. So hopefully it's just the illness and uh, out of protocol, which is good. Yes. Kenny Galladay did not practice on Thursday. Woof. Bewildering that he wasn't placed on IR. This would be five weeks. Yeah, that's a mistake. Uh, Julio Jones, Todd Gurley, Hayden Hurst. All did not practice on Thursday. Julio was downgraded, so I, I do As not. As was Gurley. Yeah, I, I, I expect them to be out. Yeah, and David Johnson, who did miss three weeks on IR with a concussion, looks great, resumed practicing and designated to return. I expect this to be identical to, like, the Eckler designated to return. He gets activated Saturday, Sunday. David Johnson's going to play this week, mm. uh, in my opinion, and uh, I would definitely play him over, over Duke Johnson. Oh, for sure. I think David Johnson comes back and actually is a good fantasy option the rest of the way. Debo Samuel held out precautionary reasons Thursday. Uh, if he's active, you're playing him? That is correct. Tevin Coleman practiced in full. He'll be added to the mix with Mostert, Coleman, Wilson, McKinnon. I think it just demotes, my name is Jeff Wilson. Out of the active yeah. roster. I agree with you. A reminder over at jointhefoot.com, your Injury Blitz podcast comes out later today. Game day alerts on Sunday morning, Sunday live with Mike as well. So we've got you taken care of through the weekend. Very important week for a lot of your leagues. If you're on Twitter, uh, let us know what you need to win. Let us know what's going on in your league. It's uh, fun to follow along. Anything else news-wise you guys want to uh, chat about before we get back into the forecast? No, but let's uh, take a moment and thank today's sponsor, Theragun. The stress of daily life weighs on us all, whether you're an elite elite athlete or you're just a regular person doing, I don't know, like 100 calf raises in the shower. 
and then your calves, <laughs> calves lock up, <laughs> and you're injured for multiple days. You got, Jason, you ever known I've anyone? I've heard about some of these people. I know someone that's done that. <laughs> yeah, they're pickleball superstars. You want to talk about your calf injury, Andy? No, no, no. Move on to my solution. But, yeah, so the solution to that problem, which I'm, I'm case, sure. I'm a case study. I'm Thank sure you. you've never experienced this. You got to check out the ther the Theragun. It's a handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combination of depth, speed, and power. And now it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. That's because the all-new Gen 4 Theragun has a proprietary brushless motor that's so quiet, you will wonder if it's on, Jason. I wonder if it's on. You'll wonder if it's on, all while you soothe your aching muscles with Theragun's signature power, amplitude, and effectiveness. We all have a Theragun. Uh, I'm not joking about Andy's calves, but we are also not <laughs> joking about the fact that the Theragun works. It's it awesome. helps. It helps your muscles. It really does. And right now, you can try Theragun for 30 days. There is no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4 with an OLED screen personalized Theragun app plus the quiet and power you need. It starts at only $199. Go to theragun.com slash footballers right now. Get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's T-H-E-R-A-G-U-N dot com slash footballers. Theragun.com slash footballers. And Foot Clan, it's the time of year for Omaha Steaks because it's always the time of year for Omaha Steaks. Look, the this holiday season, it, it's taken a long time this year to get to the holiday season, right? So let's make it worth... Same amount of time the, it takes every year. It but doesn't feel like it I this know, year. I know, I agree with you. And so let's make it worth the wait. Get the perfect gift for someone that you love, which can also be yourself. Uh, I am not joking. I ordered a an Omaha Steaks package, this steak package, yesterday. Um, this is... I mean, I just... I absolutely love it. And right now... You, you want to see a man tilt. The Jason without meat in his freezer. <laughs> yeah. That's not something what, you want to see. What do I do? How do I go There's on? About 10% of space available in Jason's freezer. He's like, get another order in! That's, That's right. right. That's, That's right. right. I'm, we're going to need another freezer. <laughs> yeah, the pre tilt. Uh, look, right now you can get the <laughs> Deluxe Grillers Assortment Plus, four free burgers, and a free digital meat thermometer... And let me tell you, nothing has made me a literally not one thing has made me a better cook than a really good high quality digital meat thermometer. It, it, the the meat always comes out perfect, um, and it's an exclusive price just for the Foot Clan. All you have to do is go to OmahaSteaks.com, enter the code Footballers into the search bar, yeah, and don't forget when you order the Deluxe Grillers assortment, you'll get those. Four free Omaha Steaks burgers and a free digital meat thermometer with the code FOOTBALLERS in the search bar at omahasteaks.com. Uh, visit omahasteaks.com, type FOOTBALLERS in the search bar to get the best gourmet gifts and steaks and meat and desserts and everything of the season. Omaha! 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 Fantasy Forecast. Oh, man, it's one of those mornings. It is. It really is. <laughs> Once you hear a pigeon story, your morning really, <laughs> it takes a turn. Buccaneers, Panthers on by this week. Yesterday we talked about the Saints, Falcons, Lions, Bears, Browns, Titans, Bengals, Dolphins, Jags, uh, Vikings, Raiders, and Jets, a.k.a. the Booker versus Gore Bowl. Nine games to get through today, so uh, take a deep breath. Take a <laughs> take a uh, Hydrate. <laughs> Oh, I got it. Right. Does it hydrate better when you put the water in your mouth and then shake it around? That's right. It okay. gets everywhere. The Indianapolis Colts. The, ab the absorption pro or, uh, process the science. starts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The science. Science. The Indianapolis Colts at 7-4 and four taking on the Houston Texans who are 4-7. and seven. Colts are 3.5-point road favorites. It's a 50.5-point over-under. I think one of the big questions in this game that we've brought up a couple times this week since the very depressing Will Fuller suspension news mm. is what can you really count on from Deshaun Watson? Should get David Johnson back. I think he will. Uh, you've got Brandon Cooks, and then you've got question marks all over the place. Uh, Jordan Akins, talk of him uh, playing a lot in the slot. Uh, Kiki QT is the number two. Somehow, some way, he is. I can't believe it. He's back. Yeah. But this should not inspire. Deshaun Watson 
ceiling predictions against the Colts? No, I mean, the, the Colts are a tough matchup already. I'm, I'm looking to pivot off of Watson, and that's not to say that Watson can't get it done. He's absolutely excellent. I do believe Brandon Cooks gets it done. I'm not going to pivot there because I think he's going to be the clear number one target. But, uh, you know, right now, the Colts, <clears throat> they're as good as it gets. The only place you can beat them, and it's <clears throat> temporary, uh, is in the running game, and that's just because their two main run stuffers are they were gone last week that's you know when Derrick Henry ran all over them and uh I believe they're going to be gone this week you'll have to stay tuned uh look at that but uh, DeForest it, Buckner was activated today oh, from no. the reserve COVID list <sighs> well that's that well sorry David Johnson your your bright shining spot got a little bit so that will more help. difficult yeah yeah he will be back Watson's tough because it, other than Patrick Mahomes, nobody throws the ball 20-plus yards more than he does. And Brandon Cooks is a big play guy. So he, he can is. save your entire week with a big play, which is nice. And you probably don't have maybe the cojones or an option other than throwing Deshaun Watson out there. And, uh, but I am a bit worried. Uh, yeah, because the struggle we know about Deshaun Watson, uh, in his career he's about seven fantasy points fewer per game without Will Fuller on the field. And – does he still had the best wide receiver in football, DeAndre Hopkins, at that time? Will Fuller is just such a difference maker. So I have, I have my concerns about Deshaun Watson. I'm not going to bet against him, but it's just it, it, you need to be aware and be prepared for the future of your your fantasy football team. And then it, I don't want to talk about him at length, but just so it, just a name to pay attention to. So Isaiah Coulter will be the rookie who replaces Will Fuller on the field. He at least has size. He's a 6'2", 200-pound uh, wide receiver. He was drafted in the fifth round. He's got a little bit of speed. He, you haven't seen him because he's been on the IR for the the majority of the season, but he is going to step in here and be on the field. And just to uh, bring up Jordan Akins, Brooks and I are taking one another on for a division title in our Dynasty League. And he let me sneak Jordan Akins off of the waiver wire. Yeah, that was a stupid move, Brooks. And uh, I am starting him right away. And I think that you can yeah, – he's one of those options. Uh, has 21% of the Houston end zone targets this year, two last week. And Watson loves throwing to the tight end position. You know, QT and Cooks are small guys. So Right. So yeah, Akins it, and Fells and that, – That's the reason why I bring up Coulter is – No doubt. He's big. Um. Indianapolis, you were disappointed last week if you tried to chase the points on Michael Pittman Jr. Um, one of the things that that we've talked about, Philip Rivers is kind of target agnostic. There, he he doesn't he'll throw it to whoever's open. If it's T. Y. Hilton last week, best game of the year. If it's Pittman, if it's Burton, Doyle, Moali Cox, if it's Pascal, uh, the running backs whom he loves throwing the ball to, that's just what they do, and so it makes it harder to kind of trust Hilton or Pittman yeah I mean I I think I would it's hard to trust Hilton just based on you know a, a, a lengthy history over the last year of just not being very good not breaking big plays the matchup is poor uh, the nice thing with Pittman is he's he's got the athleticism and the youth that you've seen him break big plays this season he he had a terrible game last week but he had nine targets sure you can't really ask for much more than nine targets other than catch them all um which mm. he didn't do so pokemon. pokemon this thing and come on i i think Pittman is a good play this week the houston matchup is one that you look for they're not a great defense you expect points to be scored um and in a divisional game you know he's the new tool that they might not be used to yeah philip rivers is a fine streaming play in my opinion here the uh, the biggest question for me on this side of the ball for the colts it is T.Y. Hilton. He fi he finally showed up last week. First touchdown is, of the year, which, highest yardage, which total. is fine. But historically, I know it's a it's a weird thing to go to this, but if you've played fantasy football for any length of time, T.Y. Hilton is a Houston Texans destroyer. He just magically shows up for all of these games, and we've seen him performing games without Andrew Luck against the Houston Texans. Do you guys have? the courage at all to flex T.Y. Hilton based off of those historical results. Yeah, I think based off of last week, it, it's it's tough and you got to have, you know, some fortitude. We we we've kind of set the bar of this week yesterday when we were talking about those flex options. Uh, we set the bar at the Bengals wide receiver group. Uh, the Tyler Boyd, T. 
T. Higgins. I is would that play, bar on the ground? Uh, that bar is not hard to get over, but uh, T.Y. Hilton is, is above that. And to illustrate your point, Mike, he's played 16 career games against them, so that's a season, right? You're used to season totals. Here would be his season total if it was 16 games against uh, <laughs> the, the Houston Texans. Oh, my goodness. 85 for 1,537 yards and 10 touchdowns. Uh, would you play T.Y. Hilton against Houston or Marvin Jones against Chicago? T.Y. Hilton. Hilton. Would you play T.Y. Hilton against Houston or Travis Fulgham against D Green Bay? Hilton. 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 Okay. What about Jacoby Myers against the – Hilton. Okay. So yeah. Hil Hil Hilton's – He's in play this week. In play. Okay. That's always nice. Once a year. Twice now here's a year the real to have him in play. Here, here's the real question because this one I, I kind of go back and forth with. I think I'm Pittman, but who would you play, Pittman or Hilton? Yeah, that's – I mean, it sounds like you'd go with the targets over the, the outlier week based on what you said about Pittman. Yeah, I would. But I wanted to know what you guys would do. I, think, I would play Pittman. I – dude, I don't know. <laughs> that's a lot of history. And it – the problem with that is it shouldn't matter. Like, last year was last year. Those were Bill O'Brien teams. It shouldn't matter. But it's every, it's like every single time he plays the Houston Texans, he just eats them up. Is this a birthday narrative, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, it feels like it. Uh, Hilton was up to his higher 73% uh, of snaps. Uh, Pittman was 86% last week for what it's worth. And, I think Eileen that Pittman's And side. Jonathan Taylor's right back in play for me. RB2? Yep. Agreed. Over Naeem Hines or no? Yes. yes. Interesting. Okay. Off the COVID list. Back at it. Mm -hmm. The Los Angeles Rams at 7-4 and four take on the Arizona Cardinals sitting at 6-5. and five. The Rams, two and a half point road favorites. It's a 48 point over under. Kyler Murray upgraded to full in practice yesterday, which is great news. Yeah, and uh, they're they're in a tailspin of sorts. You know, they've lost three or four games. The only one they won was a hail mary. And how do you think about DeAndre Hopkins right now? He this is the lowest he's been ranked by us uh, all year. He has to face Jalen Ramsey. Three out of the past four weeks been kind of disappointing for one of the target leaders in football. Yeah, he's really, when you look at his fantasy finishes, has been boom bust. He's either been a top 10 guy or he has finished outside of the wide receiver three range. Essentially, essentially he's either top 10 or he's outside the top 40, which is wild. I don't like the matchup against Jalen Ramsey. Uh, Ramsey has been used in true shadow coverage twice this year. It was against DK Metcalf and Mike Evans. And both of those, while the while those players were in coverage from Jalen Ramsey, they got shut down. So I, you have your concerns, but how you're not benching DeAndre Hopkins. You you don't bench elite players to just because they're in a poor matchup. Yeah, the Rams uh, are in the top ten against all positions over the last six weeks. They've been a dominant defense, which throws some shade on, you know, is Kenyon Drake going to get into the end zone? That's what he's needed this year to be productive. Is Kyler Murray going to have the ceiling you want and have expected from him all year long? I don't think so. I think this is going to end up being a bad game for the Arizona Cardinals offense. Uh, the Rams, we've talked about it. They're phenomenal on the season. They are the most difficult matchup for quarterbacks, fantasy points given up. For wide receivers, they are the most difficult matchup for fantasy points given up on the season. For running backs, they are the sixth most difficult matchup. They, they're, just, they're just really, really... Uh, difficult to score on. This defense has figured it out with Aaron, Don Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey is a, a real one-two punch that teams have not figured out. And I think that the the only safer option is Kyler if he runs the ball again. And I, I do expect that he will get back to the running ways. We're three weeks now from the shoulder injury. I don't think you bench Kyler, even though it's tough. If I could move on from Kenyon Drake, and, and Hopkins, we say, you know, you're going to play your studs. It's possible that, you know, you've gotten Allen Robinson and a Devontae Parker if Fitzpatrick plays where I would sneak kind of high-level guys like that over Hopkins, okay. and, and that's how I would be willing to bench him. Uh, but I think the only safe option is is Kyler because of the, the rushing base. about on the other side of the ball? Cooper Cup. Yeah, uh, look, the Cardinals have been terrible against wide receivers. I, I don't think Patrick Peterson's going to shadow either of their two studs, so I'm I'm starting Cup and Woods. Okay. I was and, saying the Cooper Cup over Hopkins. Is, is Cooper oh, Cup high enough in that list? No. Man, I, I feel like if I if push came to shove, I would start 
Cooper Cup over Hopkins. Cooper Cup has been even more boom bust than Hopkins has been. Boom boom bust. Boom bust bust. <laughs> it, I mean, it's just a matter of the matchup to me because I I, I get it. I, I, I get realize. It. I mean, that's that's tough, and you, and you've got to make the call yourself, obviously. But you know, the last six weeks, the Arizona Cardinals have been the thirtieth best against wide receivers. <laughs> yeah, they're giving up almost forty fantasy points a game. Are you willing to start any running back on the no Los Angeles side? No, not not with the potential that Cam Akers is the guy. I mean, the hot hand approach here, and Cam Akers was the one who had the hot hand last week, so he he's the one I want to stash on my bench. But this is a it's been a disaster all year. The New York Giants at four and seven take on the eight and three Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks ten point favorites. It's a forty seven and a half point over under. Daniel Jones did not practice on Thursday. Colt McCoy is likely to be behind center, and with this kind of somewhat showing signs of life defense, you can play Seattle's defense this week. Yes, I yeah. believe you can. They they've improved personnel wise. Um, Pete Carroll's obviously a good defensive coach. Always has been. Um, and against a backup quarterback, yeah, you can play Seattle for sure. All right. Uh, what about this guy? Unlimited. <laughs> it's been slow going for Russell Wilson compared to that hot start over the last four weeks. Zero inside of the top ten at the quarterback position. Welcome to the routine mm -hmm. of Russell Wilson. And there's some thought that – Healthy Chris Carson, Carlos Hyde, this team might get a little they've, bit back to their they've ways. they cut the gas. Well, if your defense improves, it lets you cut the gas, right? You don't have to let Russ cook because eventually mistakes are made when you throw the ball that many times. We started to see it. Chris Carson's Jason's start of the week, so I know we're playing him because uh, we love Jason and we believe what he says. Oh, thanks, guys. Uh, and DK Metcalf is, is unbelievable. He leads the NFL in receiving yards. It's not a, you know, you don't think about benching DK Metcalf in any situation. Where are you at with Tyler Lockett right now? Because his name came up when, when you thought about like DeAndre Hopkins or Tyler Lockett. Lockett's had his struggles as well. I know you, you have to play him to get the boom games, but that's also what we said about Hollywood. Um, Lockett last week, 73rd, three for 23 against Philadelphia. That was a huge disappointment on 90% of snaps. Yeah, it, it turned into everything was DK Metcalf. I mean, they they thought that uh, Slay could handle Metcalf, and uh, they Got were handled by. They were incorrect about that uh, assumption. Uh, but I mean, before that, you had two straight weeks of of nine targets, nine against Arizona, nine against the Rams, seven targets against Buffalo. As long as Lockett is seeing a target share like that, you can play him. The result hasn't always been great, but the opportunity. That, that type of an opportunity for Tyler Lockett, he's in play. It's just adjusting. It, it, it's crazy. So that the the person who is the wide receiver six on the season, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll put him into my flex position. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, but, it's it, so but, boom bust. But that's where we are. Five games outside the top 50 this year for Tyler Lockett, and yet he's had some weeks where he, he does what Tyreek did last week. He wins you the entire week on yeah. his performance. Uh, the question is whether they'll need a lot of this passing game. Colt McCoy throwing the football. I mean, are you playing Evan Ingram after last week with Colt McCoy? I'm uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still willing to play Evan Ingram just because it's the tight end position and he should see volume. 129 yards. We finally saw a breakout game for Evan Ingram. Yeah, I think he is uh, the one player that you can somewhat rely on. Uh, maybe, you know, <laughs> Wayne Gallman. I would keep playing Wayne Gallman. In a, in a pinch, uh, you can you could start him. Outside of that, I don't want any of the other pass-catching <laughs> options with Colt McCoy. <laughs> I, I got bamboozled in this show, Doc, right now. Yep, I saw Did it. you get it as well? Yes. Uh, his name is written in here as Wayne Gallstones. <laughs> and then I then I clicked it to go to our player profile on fantasyfootballers.com. And it links to uh, a WebMD article about oh, about I, gallstones. I did not go that far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted to see how Gallman's been performing over the last few weeks. What can you tell us about gallstones? Yeah, let's focus here on yeah. the gallstones. Well, uh, oh, now it's been, uh, Brooks updated it for me. So, but Gallman, he's a top sixteen running back for five straight weeks. I I have to take the volume there. He had twenty nine opportunities against Cincinnati. You don't bench that. You no. just play no, it. No, you do. 
And what's amazing, all five games, guys, touchdown. Yeah, I, all I, five games. What, David Montgomery is begging for a touchdown. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that the touchdowns will come this week with the backup quarterback. But the opportunity says that you you can start and continue starting Wayne Gallman. The Eagles are three seven and one. They're taking on the Green Bay Packers, sitting at eight and three. Packers are eight and a half point favorites. It's a forty eight point over under. Not really the matchup to get uh, the Eagles offense back on track. Pretty good defense for Green Bay. They'll be at home. 11th against quarterbacks, 7th against tight ends. They have been more vulnerable on the ground, and I know that's where, well, not more vulnerable, extremely vulnerable. Everybody's running on Green Bay these days, which is why Mike has Miles Sanders as the start of the week. But outside of Miles Sanders, what are you doing? Nothing. No nope. Carson uh, Wentz? I mean, okay, Goddard. Even yeah. Goddard has a little bit more of a question mark. With because, Zach Ertz back? Yeah, because Zach Ertz, I, I know that there have been a lot of got a lot of conversations about Zach Ertz, but the truth is, is Zach Ertz is a high target tight end. He may not be spectacular, but he will take targets away from Dallas Goddard, and he is a best friend of Carson Wentz in this offense. That's where he looks. I don't think Carson Wentz is going to look Goddard's way first if, if Ertz is healthy and back on the field. So it does, it does make me feel like Goddard is touchdown dependent in this game, and the Packers defense is pretty stout against opposing tight ends, so I am a little bit worried. Yeah, I, I I get it. You can be worried, but we did see last year that these two could coexist, and and Dallas Goddard was it worked out for fantasy, and that was I mean that's we're another year into the career of Dallas Goddard, another year of experience where he was getting starter reps. He was the only guy, and he was like the only reliable target after the Fulgham breakout, and he kind of disappeared. Dallas Goddard was the only reliable target for for Carson Wentz. I'm I'm willing to make a very stupid water bet that, oh, that one of you great. if not both of you will accept i'm sure i'll get in and i will <laughs> i will bet jordan akins over dallas goddard this week oh i'm in mike yes water bet <laughs> i told you i was willing to make a stupid bet that, that's a man who is rostering a player and has a false <laughs> bravado if if you saw i was not rostering him last week when i thought jordan akins was a, a, a decent start in that offense and um I still do. I think he's going to be a, a focal point. Can we retroactively bet Goddard versus Aikens last week? We cannot. Mm. I, if, <laughs> if I had the power, you Dang. know I would certainly do that. Dang. But outside of uh, the tight end, are you playing Zach Ertz? No. 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 Hmm. No, never. Okay. Zach Ertz. Okay, so Zach Ertz threw. I would have loved that quote, like, you know, over the last six yeah, years. That's That's fine. Over the first six games where Zach Ertz was playing, my man was averaging seven and a half targets a week. That's great. That is fantastic. That's kind of my point with Goddard. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, and that turned into uh, one finish as a tight end one, uh, one finish inside the top fifteen. Yeah, he, he was. He's been awful. Poor was, six games, seven and a half targets a game, empty defining target. his entire career. Uh, uh, this year. Just saying this year. Yeah, I mean I'm I, I would I would be picking up Ertz. I would roster him, but I, I do want to see him get back, get you know, a full game in. Remember when Dallas Goddard came back from his injury, that first game back, even when he yeah. was alone, it was not utilized. All right. Uh it's not hard work to go four yards from the line of scrimmage to turn around, Jason. That's the Zach Ertz of this year. That's why Alshon yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. It's on the not field. hard. And why is he so bad at it now? He still gets targeted. <laughs> he, I maybe, maybe you're misdirecting your anger, Mike. Maybe the Carson Wentz that you've seen over this part of maybe. the year that we thought was actually okay, and we were blaming other things like maybe. the offensive line and everybody else. Maybe it's Carson Wentz's fault. Maybe, or maybe it's Mister Clean's fault. All right. On the other side, Rogers. Yes, Aaron Jones. Yes, Jamal Williams. Will you flex Jamal Williams? I. I I, I am. I am flexing Jamal Williams. Are you really? Week. Are you? Yes. Would you play him over Ty Hilton in a flex spot? Yeah, the the flex spot probably not because the, you know the, for that flex spot I'm really going for upside. That's I'm I'm factoring in my other positions are safer, but Jamal Williams I think is a flex play right now. But that, the opportunity is being split up between him and Aaron Jones. I would play him over 
T.Y. Hilton. You would. I would, I would because T.Y. Hilton has a 50-50 chance at one for 20. I mean, that's what he's done for this entire year. Williams will have 10 opportunities in this game. At least. At least. He had 17 last week. He had seven the week prior. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't think Williams is, a, is a, a guarantee for volume. I do expect them to split it up, but he, he you know, obviously he's not as good as Aaron Jones, not as effective or as efficient with it. I think if you don't get a touchdown – um, you're going to be disappointed if if you started Jamal Williams, Devontae Adams. Yes. What about Alan Lazard? Are you? He's got four plus targets in every game this year. Been banged up. Was limited on Thursday. I expect him to play. Are you playing him? Hopefully not. Okay. Ho hopefully not yet. And Robert Tunyon, tight end for the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. Jason start of the week. Uh, he's the tight end four on the year. Case closed. That's enough. New England Patriots five and six taking on the Los Angeles Chargers at three and eight. Patriots are one point road favorites in this one. That's uh, how the Chargers like to lose. <laughs> by one point. <laughs> yes. At home. 47 and a half point over under. Uh, drastic difference in pace of play between these two teams. New England is uh, New England opponents are averaging fewest plays per game, while the Chargers are the fastest team in terms of most plays per game. So something's got to give there. This is not the matchup where I am I'm extremely I don't think Herbert's going to have a huge game here. Bill Belichick against rookie quarterbacks, 19-5 and five historically. If there's a coach that knows how to kind of just unlock a few things to make a rookie uncomfortable and disrupt them and at least mess the rhythm up for a quarter or two, it's Bill Belichick. Yeah. I mean, generally speaking, I would agree with that. The hard part here for Bill Belichick is – that that Justin Herbert has two elite pass catching weapons. It, that's not even factoring in Mike Williams or Hunter Henry. Like Keenan Allen is elite. If, Ke if go ahead, cover up Keenan Allen. You're going to see 15 targets go to awesome Eckler, and you won't be able to stop. You you can't stop both of them. I, I genuinely thought you were going to say he has two elite weapons, and that's not even factoring in Austin Eckler. Oh, because no. I, I think Mike Williams is elite. Uh, Andy, oh, uh, that's we've your, gone to elite now. I, I mean, I've I've always thought he's elite as as far as talent, not necessarily an elite fantasy option week in and week out. Okay, but I, he is extremely talented. He, you know, he's a top ten NFL draft pick, and all he's done in the NFL is exactly what he's been asked to do. You know, he's never been made the they one. They should ask him to score a bunch of fantasy points. <laughs> yes. They should ask him to land softly on the ground <laughs> so that he can stay healthy. You try to land softly from 25 feet, Andy. That's true. Yeah, at the at that size. Um, but, yeah, to your point, Mike, you're saying that the, the weapons may overwhelm the history of this defense, but I don't think so. I, I, I'm trying to find somebody else. I'm inclined to agree. I don't think it's going to be a great game for Justin Herbert or Keenan Allen. I mean, one uh, shoe's on the ground from last week, and the other shoe could drop this week. You could have two shoes dropped. Eh, that was a shoe? That was a shoe. That was that was a shoe? Quarterback 14? Yeah, he, I mean, wait, wait. He threw for over 300 yards? Yeah, it's, anybody could throw it's for only over one 300 shoe, yards. Oh, well, you guys, that's a, that's a tough critic over there. Well, I mean, when does the shoe drop for you? Uh, it would, you have to be in, outside of the top 20. Oh, okay. All right. Maybe this week. We'll see. So what do you do with Keenan Allen? You uh, play him. You, you obviously play him, but it's a little bit of a DeAndre Hopkins situation in the sense that you're, you're getting Gilmore. I think Gilmore will shadow even in the slot, um, on Keenan Allen. They, they try to take away your number one target. Now, Herbert, it doesn't matter. Herbert will force him the ball. We've seen that enough already this year. If Keenan Allen has a defender that he's wearing as a backpack, that ball will shoe, still be coming The shoe his really way. dropped on Keenan Allen last week. <laughs> Finished 18th at the position. Like I said, tough, tough crowd. <laughs> tough crowd. Yeah, you play him. Mike Williams is my start of the week. I think he ends up with a touchdown in this game. Hunter Henry, he's, he's a playable every week tight end. Eckler, yep. And then make your decision on Herbert based on the other options that you have. I don't think he's a guaranteed must bench by any stretch of the imagination. The hard uh, part for, at this point of the year, if for if you've been rolling with Justin Herbert and you're looking for another option, you you might be streaming. So that's like, are you playing Fitzpatrick? Kirk, Ryan, we don't even know if Ryan Fitzpatrick is starting, so I, I wouldn't even – Lamar Jackson. Factor. Is Lamar Jackson playing this week? You tell me, Mike. I don't know. You tell me. All right, let's say he is Kirk, against Dallas. You play Lamar or Justin Herbert? 
I would play Lamar. Big Ben against Washington or Justin Herbert? Justin Herbert. Okay. Would you play Kirk Cousins this week against Jacksonville or Justin Herbert? Man, Austin Eckler just do, he does give exactly. so, so many free points to the quarterback exactly. position. This, Maybe you've swayed me to thinking of Herbert this week as a above average option. Yeah, I, he's still a top twelve guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think yeah. I think he is. He his upside is limited. He's his putting the shoe back on. <laughs> his big the laces are pretty loose, and that that's fine. If you want to say, well, I got him at my QB ten. They QB really 12. slowed that's Kyler right. down last week too, in the passing game. So I think it's that a little bit of the New England defensive mm, lore. That's the question to me: Kyler or Herbert? This week? Yeah. Kyler. Kyler. Yeah, I, I would play Kyler. Uh, you doing all right over there? <laughs> I am. My my throat is struggling, but I'm back. Okay. Um, let's talk about the New England side. Are you <laughs> – it's a tough It's a tough side to talk about each and every week. What are you doing with the wide receivers? Not, Nothing? Not playing them. What are you doing with this guy? I'm not playing him. Oh man. Uh here here is something that I need to say. Right now in my quarterback rankings, I have Mitchell Trubisky ranked ahead of Cam Newton for fantasy football. Oof. Yeah. So that's where I am with Cam Newton this week. Well, much like Zach Ertz, sometimes you just have to call a spade a spade. You have to move forward. The the Chargers the last six weeks have been great against fantasy quarterbacks. They've been elite against fantasy wide receivers all year long. You can beat them on the ground. Like D Damian Harris is in play here. Damian Harris is a good running back. It is his job as the grinder. The upside is not there because they keep going to guys like Rex Burkett and James White when they get into the red zone. But I think that James White is or uh, Damian Harris is a fine running back to play. I think I agree with you on that one. Sonny Michelle got 2% of snaps last week. And did not yep. get a touch. So, uh, Moving forward, Denver Broncos. 4-7, uh, and seven, Kansas City Chiefs 10-1. and one. Chiefs are 13.5-point favorites. It's a 15.5-point over-under. Last time these two played, it was a snow game. Kansas City won 43-17. I think it was run heavy. Uh, I think it was technically Mahomes' worst game of the year in the snow. Mahomes has been incredible. He's, He's been no Santa Claus. He can't handle the snow. That's actually, right. he gen I think his numbers actually show he can. Well, this year he can't. And there was an outlier. But uh, that side of the ball is a lot easier. Mahomes is in and Kelsey always. What do you do with the, the split? The Lev Bell, Clyde Edwards, Alaire, I'll admit I added Lev Bell in a league this week because if these snap counts continue to go up, he is a spot start situation where you can just hope for a touchdown. Well, I, I, he was on my priority list as well. I, I wouldn't see him as a spot start, though. I would see him more as insurance in case Clyde edwards lair got injured. Uh, you know, Lev Bell's been dropped in, I would say, the majority of active leagues. Lev Bell has never seen more than nine opportunities since joining the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, it, it would it would take it would take an injury, but he is one of those guys that you know we. This is the time of year where those insurance options should be rostered and they can help win a championship. So I would I would pick him up, but I would not be starting. Clyde Clubbell. did not practice this week due to an illness, so I assume he'll be out there. But that's something to monitor. Insurance, as Jason said, but also just uh, if that snap count gets up higher, you still have your sh you know you still got a shot at at a game. Um. Outside Tyreek, yep. What do you do with uh, McCall Hardman, Sammy Watkins, Demarcus Robinson? Unnecessary. Unnecessary. <laughs> They're not needed. <laughs> doesn't seem like it. Certainly can't count on one over the other. It doesn't seem like Noah Fant. Mike start of the week on the other side of the ball. Uh, okay, tight end position. Yep. Jerry Judy's been limited again this week. Jerry you, Judy. Is he, he he should be dropped? I don't think Jerry Judy. Wow. I mean, look, Drew I'm, Locke. No, I'm I'm sad for you. I, I agree. You. I agree, though. I am sad for myself. I I love Jerry Judy. I think Jerry Judy is extremely talented and will have a great career. It's not going to happen this year. It's not going to happen with Drew Locke. Uh, the upcoming playoff schedule is a little bit difficult. And Drew Locke, you hear something Mike Taglier uh, pointed out. Locke has registered a bad throw on 29 percent of his attempts. By far the highest in the NFL. For context, Carson Wentz, which when you watch, you're like every single one looks like a bad throw, is at 22%. Um, now, he 
also throws a good ball. He's just inconsistent, so he can he can get the ball, uh, you know, uh, to players from time to time. But I, I Jerry Judy has had one great game this whole year. Yeah, I don't believe in Drew Locke, and and by extension, you can't believe in the pass catchers around him. Yeah, it's tough, uh, including, you know, all of our hopes and dreams for Judy or even Noah Fant. I think it, it's why he's been so inconsistent. And at the running back position, Melvin Gordon. Uh, you can play him. I mean, the the, the Kansas City defense is average uh, against fantasy running backs. Now, the dream of having that backfield to yourself where Melvin Gordon really can shine because he'll just get 20-plus opportunities, that might be out the window because Phil Lindsay did return to practice on a limited basis, but the beat reporters were saying he looks just fine coming off of his knee injury. So Melvin Gordon will not – it's not likely he's getting that upgrade this week. All right, two Monday night football games, and yes, there's Tuesday night football this week. The first Monday night game, Washington at four and seven, taking on the Steelers, who are undefeated at eleven and zero. Steelers eight and a half point favorites. It's a forty two point over under. You know the hardest part with uh, you know you, you look at the Steelers, they're at eleven and zero. You can start thinking about the undefeated season. It's always hard to kind of paint the picture of how they lose a ball game now. The Baltimore game was much closer than I thought it would be for a long time, so we know it can happen. But I don't think it happens against Washington this week. They're eight and a half point favorites. Uh, this is two of the better defensive fronts mm -hmm. in the NFL, making some decisions more difficult for running backs. And uh, so let's start there. Antonio Gibson mm. has been on fire. We actually talked about him a lot during our Series XM show yesterday afternoon. He's been outstanding. He's been uh, the RB3 over the last three weeks, the RB4 over the last six weeks, or eight weeks, I'm sorry. But the, here's the matchups. Dallas, the Giants, Detroit, Cincinnati, Dallas. Those are the last five weeks when he's been inside. I like those matchups better. Yeah, and here's Pittsburgh, who, who generally shuts everybody down outside of a Miles Sanders 74-yard run. I think that it is the intelligent thing to do to make sure that you're playing the best matchup here and not just locking Gibson in. If you have David Montgomery this week against the league worst Detroit defense, I'd be playing him over Antonio Gibson against Pittsburgh. As as the uh, one of the founding fathers of Antonio Gibson's season yes. fan club, I would play David Montgomery if I had that option. It, D Antonio Gibson is not a must bench. We saw him have success against Baltimore early on in the season, uh, an extremely difficult matchup, but – Andy, you're right. Of Miles Sanders had a 74 yard touchdown run and finished that day with 11 carries for 80 yards. Yeah, we saw Saquon Barkley have double digit carries and finished, I think, with like six rushing yards back in week. Remember, guy Saquon Barkley was playing this year. Oh yeah, yeah. Remember they're that not, guy? They're not going to be able to control the line of scrimmage. They're not going to be able to uh, play from a lead in this game, and that does, you know. Well, it'll be interesting to see how many third down snaps J.D. McKissick gets versus Gibson in this game if yeah. they're coming back. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, he was on the on the ready for <laughs> give me a kiss. Goodness. S scared all of us. You know, I was going to say you've picked your spots, Al, a couple times this week. You had the kind of sad Alvin Kamara. Oh, man. That one was frightening. It felt like a mistake. It, what do you it, have to say for yourself? <laughs> I'm pretty proud of it. Oh yeah. my gosh! I like it. That, that I'm I'm proud Smooches, of you. Smooches hit it again. Just give me a kiss. Oh my god! It's <laughs> it's it's so loud and abrupt. It is very. Just give me a kiss. Well, the nice <laughs> wow. thing is that it 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 came right in the middle of words. So yeah, that was, that was really <laughs> really helpful. You picked a pretty bad time to talk right there. <laughs> Oh my god. One more time. I I thought some kind of uh frequency had taken over our oh, show. Oh, I did too. I thought, like the the radio has come to shut us down. Well, I'm mad knew, at the podcast. I knew it was on purpose once I glanced over and he wasn't freaking out. He was just like, "No, that was that was plotted. That was you, planned." You like that? I can do it again. <laughs> you like that? Um yeah, so to to get back to the point, I'm afraid of saying his name. Uh the scat back could be on the field uh, yeah. from time to time here. I don't expect him to do much uh, against this Steelers defense either. So I'm I'm not starting him. So maybe Gibson, always McLaurin, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. But I would say if you have 
other good uh, Kareem Hunt, uh, Raheem Mostert, David Montgomery. That 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 tier of like they've got good matchups this week and they're a solid running back. I would put them in would ahead you of Gibson. Play Antonio Gibson against Pittsburgh, or Ezekiel Elliott against the Baltimore Ravens. TikTok. You can't make me answer this question. <laughs> I, I would play Antonio Gibson. I think I would go Ezekiel Elliott. Oh. I don't like it. Do you like it enough to bet? No, no, okay. no I don't want that. All right, well, uh, Pittsburgh's offensive line been struggling. Uh, 29th in rush success rate. The pass game has been working as well. So many options for Big Ben. He can throw it downfield to Claypool. He can dump it to Juju or Deontay. Ebron's been a weapon of late. Benny Snell. Volume. That's it. Here's the problem with the volume and that uh, the volume and that's it. Like I would definitely start Gibson over Benny Snell is the fact that this is also a bad matchup yeah. on the other side. Uh, Washington, you know, the the last six weeks, they're fifth best against running backs on the season. They're fifth best against running backs. So uh, Benny Snell's not shown any flashes of brilliance at all. He's he's a solid grinder and that's fine. If it was a good matchup, I'd be all about Benny Snell. But in a bad matchup, I, I don't love the play. You can start him in your flex if if you need a, a running back. But, you know, Wayne Gallman, I'd play over him. So he's he's down a, a, a couple tiers. The Bills at 8-3, and three, the other Monday night game against the 49ers sitting at 5-6. and six. Impressive win for San Francisco last week. Bills are uh, one-point road favorites. It's a 47-point over-under. The defense looked uh, improved for San Francisco. We know that they can scheme in their way now that they're getting healthier to – uh, at least being a problem on that side of the ball. Josh Allen doesn't have John Brown, and that's been bad. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been something that lowers his ceiling. It almost feels like the fuller metric that uh, I don't have him right in front of me, but when John Brown's out, it's, it's hurt the upside of Josh Allen. Last week, San Francisco shutting down that intermediate passing game. Cooper Cup. Robert mm -hmm. Woods, it's been a problem. Do you have the same level of Beasley confidence this week as last week, Mike? Uh, I have the, I have the confidence. Yes, that in, in a PPR league, you can see Cole Beasley getting five plus receptions in this matchup. So yeah, I still have the confidence to flex him. Yeah, it's it's you know when when you talk about shutting down that intermediate range, Cole Beasley's not worried about that. He's like, I don't, I don't go I'm there. Short range. <laughs> That's I'm, fair. I'm right off the line. Just get me the ball. Uh, what about so Josh Allen this week himself confident against San Francisco? They're giving up 216 passing yards per game. They've been a lot better of late, uh, seventh over the last six weeks, only 15 fantasy points. Fine with Josh? Fine, fine, fine because of his running floor. But you're not excited this week, and I I've been staring at this uh, in our league of record, uh, Josh Allen or Kirk Cousins. So what say you to that, Andy? Uh, Since it is against you. Oh, my. Not that our matchup matters at all. It matters a little bit. It determines if I play you or Jason next week. Or, mm. I mean, you or Mike next week. Um, I'd probably stick with Josh Allen in that one. Okay. I think that's how we have them ranked right now. Yeah, it is how they're ranked. Kirk Cousins, it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Josh Allen's in. Stefan Diggs is always in. Zach Moss, Devin Singletary, staying away for this game? Yeah, Zach Moss is... It's very strange what is happening up in Buffalo. He saw 60% of the snaps and yet only 45% of the running back attempts. He's got a Josh uh, Josh Kelly problem. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Zach as Moss, in he's not good. As in he's not that good. Yeah. Yeah. So you had you had sort of seen his, his snaps and his running back opportunity share rising uh, a couple weeks ago, 47%, 50%, 82%. And now we're back on the downward slope here where like, Devin Singletary is a, is a good running back. I think Zach Moss is okay, uh, but it's it's a timeshare. It's a timeshare in a really tough matchup. Uh, you you have to hope Zach Moss scores a touchdown, which is – that's not how I want my run. Like, I'm playing Jamal Williams sure. over Zach Moss. Yeah, Devin Singletary has been one of the more explosive backs still uh, over the last couple of years in terms of 20-plus yard runs. He's got that potential but just doesn't score. Mostert, uh, with Coleman back, Jarek McKinnon, still confident in Mostert this week against this Yes, very easy to run on Buffalo defense? Yep. And then outside of him, Debo? Yep. Jason hates him. 
<laughs> yeah, for some reason. It's really weird. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, I'm not playing Brandon Ayuk. There's no. there's no chance. No, he's he's just off of the, the, the COVID list. Let's let's see some game action from the rookie before we get back in. Jordan Reed. Just outside that top twelve for us this week. Yeah, again, but I, upside. I, I, he does have upside. He has the target volume. We saw it last week. It didn't, you know, it didn't turn into fantasy relevance, unfortunately. But I, I wouldn't pivot off of him if you if you need a tight end and you don't. I would. If you can't have Tanya, I mean, who who would you grab off? The, you would play Akers or uh, Atkins, right? Akins? Akins. There we yeah. go. Uh, the Atkins diet. Yeah, the, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I I don't have confidence in Jordan Reed. No. If if Debo and Ayuk are back out there. Dwelly is on the field more often than Jordan Reed is. You're going to need to really thread the needle with Jordan Reed. This is not the old offense built around him. Um, it's going to be built around Ayuk and Samuel. So if you don't get that one or two targets, the touchdown, I think you're going to be super disappointed. I will say it's, it's definitely fair the fact that both wide receivers are back this week. Uh, fewer targets going to the tight end position. Tuesday Night Football.com game. Uh, we've really worked this out well. Uh, trying to keep Tuesday night football we going. Have, yeah. Uh the Dallas Cowboys at three and eight taking on the six and five Baltimore Ravens. The six and five Baltimore Ravens. Whoops. Might not make the playoffs. Whoops. Uh Baltimore is going to need to run the football. We think Lamar Jackson is going to be back. He will be eligible to return. That does not mean he will be back. And John Harbaugh has been tight lipped about whether he can return. Robert Griffin not practicing. I mean, if you if you watch the Wednesday game, I I think that you know how bad they need Lamar Jackson. They this is a team trying to make the playoffs that's on the outskirts, and um, if he's eligible, he will absolutely be active. You missed Trace McSorley almost bring this team back. <laughs> Uninspired. <laughs> who has Hollywood Brown in our league of record now? Ah, who cares? I know. Who cares? Dallas defense allowing the most rushing yards per game, highest opponent rush rate, highest yards before contact, and they will need to run the football. J.K. Dobbins? Yep. I would put him ahead of the Jamal Williams types. Yes. I, I oh. would, too. I would, yeah, too. for sure. Uh, but it will be helpful for J.K. Dobbins if Lamar Jackson's back on the field because if you don't have to respect – Robert Griffin or McSorley in the passing game, they're going to double down on the defense the way they did against, you know, obviously it was Pittsburgh, but Gus Edwards was irrelevant last week. Uh, they could not run the football. So let's hope Lamar's back out there for your fantasy teams. Mark Andrews, will he clear the protocol in time? It seems like you might be without him for another week. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if he will. He, he was added later, so I, I doubt you have Andrews this week. That's that's the player that I am replacing with Jordan Aikens. Uh, Mark Andrews probably going to miss another week. Hopefully he'll be back for your fantasy playoffs because he's kind of relied upon in a lot of leagues. Hollywood Brown, any chance you flex him with Lamar back? Not pr probably not. I mean, e even with Mark Andrews out. <clears throat> oh, I didn't it's, think it's, about it's, that. <laughs> oh, Jason's I'm back. in. <laughs> I'm in. I just come on, Hollywood. Let's string together some good games at the end of the season. You got one in a row. It's your biggest streak. You got one in a row, 70 and a touchdown on eight targets last week. So, you know, they really need to facilitate getting him the ball, even if it's in the screen game with his speed. So, desperation play. Hollywood desperation. Without uh, Mark Andrews, if, if Lamar Jackson is, is back, no Andrews and the Dallas defense, I, I think Hollywood is in play this week. On the other side of the ball, Andy Dalton and his friend. <laughs> Amari Cooper averaging seven targets per game with Andy Dalton. We're fine with Amari Cooper? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Are we fine with anybody else in this game, honestly? Zeke? Not really. I mean, uh, Zeke is okay. Here, Here's, the uh, I think, the, the best question. Zeke or J.K. Dobbins? And I would take the hopeful upside of Dobbins there. I have Dobbins ranked higher right now. Yeah, we have him at 15 on the week. Zeke at RB17. I mean, that's that's risky business. The, like fully projecting that J.K. Dobbins will be the leader of the of the Baltimore Ravens backfield. It's gonna happen, but I'm I'm willing to take that chance this week. It's been a little rocky for the running back heavy early first round crowd this year between Saquon and CMC's injuries and yeah. Clyde edwards alaire letting you down and well Ezekiel Elliott. So mm -hmm. not so automatic this year. Nope, such is life, right? And then 
any other players on this Dallas side that you guys are not Dalton Schultz <laughs> willing to look at? <laughs> not Dalton Schultz. You should get a shirt. That's what it should say on it. Not Dalton Schultz. All right, let's move on. Prop it like it's hot. Presented by Monkey Knife Fight. All right, favorite week 13 props over at Monkey Knife Fight. These have been fun all year long. You can head over to ballerspicks.com, use the code BALLERS, and play with us. 100% deposit match up to $50 on you Monkey should. Knife Fight. You, you should, should do that. You should go do that, You man. can and you should. Ballerspicks.com for that. Use the code BALLERS. Who, what's your favorite uh, pick I'll your jump in pick here first. Uh, yeah. I, I want to talk about Jonathan Taylor, rookie running back for the Indianapolis Colts. His more or less, uh, when I was looking at this, was set at 50 and a half yards, and I will take the more. It might surprise people to learn that six of his 10 games, he has actually surpassed 50 rushing yards despite the feeling of disappointment in Jonathan Taylor. And I just figured that's about where he got in those <laughs> games. That's fine. <laughs> Whatever, that's more. Man. More than 50 and a half. Uh, in fact, every game that he has seen 10 or more rushing attempts, he has surpassed the 50 and a half rushing yard mark. Houston has the second worst rush defense in the league. They are allowing 150 plus rushing yards per game. I'm taking the more for Jonathan Taylor. I, I will say this, something I didn't bring up when we, uh, we did our play a game the other day. If you kind of scratch your head sometimes with the playing time for Jonathan Taylor, even Gibson with McKissick and Clyde, they are all ranked outside the top 60 in pass protection at the running back position. They have all struggled in that area. Clyde at 63, Taylor at 67, Antonio Gibson at 71 in terms of pro football focus's pass protection numbers. So something sure. to be aware of as to why, oh, explosive plays. Well, you know, if your quarterback's on his back, that's a problem too. So yep. I'm going to go with Latavius Murray. His line is 56.5 yards, and I'm taking the less all number right. on Latavius Murray. Atlanta – their defense has been uh, pretty good against the run all year, especially Great. recently. I think they're number two over the yeah. last six weeks. He didn't do it against Atlanta two weeks ago. I don't think he gets it done here. His value's in, does Latavius get back into the end zone one or two times? I don't think he needs 56 and a half for more yards to do it. So I'm going to take the less with Latavius. I I agree. I like less both. Tavius. I like both. Oh, I like less Tavius. Less um, Tavius. I like both of yours, and I love mine. I'm taking <laughs> Keenan Allen. Less than seven wow. and a half receptions. Look, to get to eight I receptions with Gilmore shadowing him, uh, New England's pace of play, I think those two things come together Okay, and say eight is a really high bar to get to, so I'm going to take less than seven and a half. And if you haven't played this game uh, yet, you can play – here's how it works. You you pick a game and there's there's two options – you pick the more or less on both of them. If you get them right, you get three times your money. It's, it's pretty fun. Get some skin in the game. Uh, very easy to do at BallersPicks.com and use the code BALLERS. All right, that'll do it for today's show. Like I said, Mike will be live Sunday morning, as always. And if you want the injury podcast, you can go to jointhefoot.com and check out the injury blitz with Matthew Betts later this afternoon. Otherwise, enjoy the weekend. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Info Clan, there is nothing better than a delicious Omaha Steaks holiday feast and the deluxe grillers assortment. It includes perfectly aged top sirloin steaks, incredible meats, amazing sides, and infamous Omaha Steaks desserts. Right now, you can get the deluxe grillers assortment plus four free burgers and a free digital meat thermometer at an exclusive price only for the Foot Clan. Just go to omahasteaks.com and type footballers into the search bar. You'll find it there, omahasteaks.com.